welcome to a new video. So I am home. I have been back in the United States for two weeks now and the world race experience is officially over. And I just wanted to do one last video about it to wrap it up, recap, answer some frequently asked questions and just kind of give us all some really good closure. So a year ago I sat here and made a similar video about how I was feeling and yeah, after training camp I was really excited. Um, I felt really good. But before training camp, I was so nervous. Like, f when I first heard about the world race, I just knew. It felt like a dream of a dream I didn't know I had. Like, it just made so much sense. Like, even though I'd never heard of this mission trip and I'd never thought about being a missionary, it just, it was like, yeah, that's my dream. That's it. And it just felt so right. But even despite that, even like despite the assurance um, of that calling and despite all of the things that were lining up and all the doors that were opening, I still was so insecure. And I just felt like, wow, I don't have any experience. I don't have any knowledge. I don't even, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm just not equipped or worthy of this experience. And I was just so insecure about it. And I had this feeling that I was going to get to training camp and everyone would find out. Everyone would find out that I was like a liar or a faker or that I was like putting on some kind of facade pretending to be a eligible Christian. Like whatever that is, I don't know if that's, that's not even real. But that's kind of how I felt. I felt like I was just waiting for a shoe to drop and everyone would find out that I was lying or something. I don't know. That doesn't even make sense. But that's how I felt. And when I went to training camp, I finally like put an end to all of that and realized how ridiculous that was and how that didn't make any sense <laughs> and I um, was able to go into the mission trip pretty confident and what was really cool was throughout the entire year we were constantly doing things we didn't know how and things we'd never done before but God really just equipped us every step of the way. I mean month one in India we were preaching. I had to speak literally the very first day of mission, of mission work and I loved that because I just got to go right in there <laughs> and um, tackle a fear like day one. So month one was cool because we started preaching like just all the scary stuff like praying out loud and preaching stuff we were all scared of. We just knocked it out month one. Um, and yeah, every step of the way we were, we were doing things, I, we didn't know what we were doing. And God really just showed up every time and equipped us every time. One scripture that I've been meditating on lately, and I, I've talked about this a few times in a few different settings, so I'm sorry if you've heard this before, but a scripture that I've been thinking about a lot lately is Corinthians, I think it's 9.22, sorry if it's not, but it basically says, um, Paul, bas Paul basically says, I've become all things for all men for the sake of the gospel, and that's really what I think the world race was this year. You know, when we... When they wanted us to dance, we danced. When they wanted us to be preachers, we were preachers. If they wanted us to teach English, we taught. If they wanted us to be a drama team, we put on a skit. If they needed us to clean something, to do construction, if they needed us to give advice, to talk to someone about the Bible, if they needed us to hold something heavy, I mean, anything, whatever people needed us to be, we did it. And yeah, maybe we weren't the best singers or the best actors or the best dancers or the best preachers and the most knowledgeable or the most qualified, but we were the ones that were there. And we were the ones that were available. And so we became those people for the sake of the gospel. That's what the world race was. That's what the world race is. You're available to God any way that you need to be available and then you get used in every possible way. That's it. And it's amazing. And it's, it sounds scary, but you get out there and you're like, wow, I can do all things, literally all things through Christ because he equips us and strengthens us. That's the verse. But it's so cool to like look back and how insecure we were and how scared and to think now like, wow, we did all of that because the, the Lord allowed us to. And, and the Lord did all of that and he let us help him. It's really cool. Yesterday, I wrote down, like, every lesson the Lord taught me, like, that I could remember um, from every month, and it was just amazing. Like, wow, look at what the Lord did this year. I think some of the biggest things that I loved about the world race as a whole were, I've narrowed it down to a few. One, I would say that you just get to spend an entire year where your full-time job and your full-time focus is on the Lord, and that is the biggest gift. Like, that is your your day job, your night job, your side job, your hobby, like that is everything, is you're focusing on serving the Lord. And 
that's amazing. <laughs> that you don't have to be distracted by anything like that's the thing all the time. And after that, I think what's so incredible about the experience was just getting to do it alongside such incredible teammates, such incredible friends, people just who fight for you and who love you and who think you're hilarious and who just literally have to be around you all day, but also want to be around you all day. And when they're not around you for half a day, they are like, where did you go? And yeah, I'm pretty introverted. So that like sucked at times, but most of the time it was so great. We were at PBT Parent Vision Trip. Um, we were all, that was an interesting time for us. We were all struggling with different things. It was really hard to have our parents come in month eight. And we were all sitting around the pool and we were just like, wow, how are you doing? How are you doing? Like, what are you struggling with? How's it going for you? And, and we all just sat there and we just cared about each other and listened to each other and encouraged each other and then celebrated with people who were having a good time with their parents and encouraged people who maybe weren't. And I just remember thinking, wow, like these people are legit. These people, we care about each other. These are my friends and these are people are fighting for me. And like, it's just really simple and natural. And that was amazing. The fellowship in the community on the roller race is crazy. Yeah, you talk about iron sharpens iron, like it's crazy. And then I would say my third favorite thing about the world race experience was just getting to spend almost all of my time with locals. The world race is like pretty much 95% of the time you're going to be with locals, like living with them, eating with them, working with them, doing ministry with them. I mean, some months will look different. Maybe you won't have that, but most months, like that's what we got. We got to make, I have friends now all over the world and I got to do ministry with people all over the world and you get to see people's passions and hearts and uh, it's just crazy, and I learned so much about making disciples, and that it's it looks different all the time. You know, sometimes it's just gonna be hanging out with a little boy and like listening to his day and how how middle school went and like sharing a bowl of cereal. And other days it's gonna be like crying with a woman because her sister died. And other days it's gonna be playing basketball. And other days it's gonna be like teaching someone English. Like it's gonna look. It can look like so many different things, but every time it looks like relationship. And that's really cool. That's the biggest lesson I learned was to put time and energy and value and priority into relationships with others, into pursuing people. Um, yeah, I saw so many people that were so good at that, and I saw how fruitful it was and how satisfying it was. And I saw that, like, that's the thing. That's why we're here. I would say, so the other side of that, some of the things about the experience that I found to be difficult or unpleasant was probably number one that you don't really have control over anything and you get over that quick but it still gets weary like you don't have control over how you spend the majority of your time what you're doing in any given moment um you know you get off time but like you it's limited what you can do with it so I'd say yeah especially if you are older and you're used to being an adult and having full control over your life like I was that gets minimized to an extent and yeah so when I left the race I was really excited about that I was like, I'm excited to just be able to spend my time the way I want it and to have like full control over my time and my life and and yeah it's it's really humbling to give that up for a year um but it was really nice to get a duck <laughs> and then second I would say community <laughs> even though I said it was one of the best parts it was also a struggle so yeah constantly being around people is hard and that did get tiring the other day my parents went out to dinner and they were like we can't go out to dinner without Julia she's not invited we're not going and I was like please go please and my parents went to dinner for two hours and I was like this is the first time in a year I've been alone wow <laughs> like truly alone and yeah that's hard I mean yeah you'll get to be alone like oh you're like in a room by yourself or you can go on a walk or something but I was like home alone and that was crazy. Um, so yeah, you're not going to get a lot of personal time or personal space. And that, that was really hard for me after a while. But overall, I'd say I loved the experience so much. There was never a time I wanted to go home or I wanted to quit or I wished I wasn't there, honestly. I mean, a lot of my teammates and squad mates did, and that's totally normal. But I honestly, there was never a day I wanted to go home or I wished I wasn't there. And I would say around month nine, yeah, 
in the DR was the very first time I was like, wow, this is getting old. And when we go home, that'll be good. I'll be ready to go home when we go home in two months. But I didn't want to go home then. I just thought, yeah, when month 11 comes, I'll be ready. And that, it took me even eight month, eight or nine months to get to that. So there was never really a time when I was like, that's it. I can't do this. <laughs> and, like, started looking at flights. Like, I never did that. And I'm not – and, yeah, a lot of people did go through that. So that's real. And I'm just, like, super, super grateful that I never felt that way. Um, I would say the biggest respect that the race had on me this year or the Lord changed in my life this year through the race would be my confidence. I think, I think I've always been pretty confident, but this experience has made me just so confident in Christ and who I am. And I've heard it time and time again from my teammates and squad mates, like, um, about how, just how confident I am and just my basic demeanor. And yeah, it's crazy. My fundraising t-shirt said, practice bold, outrageous love. And I I really think I grew into that word this year. I just grew into what it means to be bold. Um, what it means to be bold. Bold for the gospel. Bold when you're giving feedback. Bold when you're being honest. I've become so honest. Someone who's totally known um, for being genuine and giving real answers. And that's awesome. I love that. And yeah, I just, I feel confident. I feel confident when I'm speaking in front of people. And I feel confident um, talking about the word and talking about the gospel and I'm confident in so many things that I was not confident in before. And just in myself and who I am and who Christ created me to be. And it's just like the simplicity of that. And that is everything. I learned so much this year. I could just talk for hours. I think some other standout things I learned were um, the importance of honesty and giving feedback with love and gentleness. The importance of being gentle. The importance of speaking up when you're, you know, hearing lies in your head from the enemy and sharing it with others because I've realized that, you know, the enemy can't do anything with our honesty and we can't allow it to, to stay in our head. We have to be vulnerable and we have to share. Um, yeah, and just about the importance of discipleship and relationships. So many big things, so many big lessons. It's crazy. Um, yeah, this experience was amazing. I would say on the whole... It was wonderful. And yeah, it was hard. There were days when I was so sweaty and I didn't know if the sweat on my body was mine or someone else's. And there were days when I got bit by so many bugs that I cried. And there were days when I saw horrible things. I saw people that were paralyzed and people that were poor and children with gashes on their head. And I saw a man that had been shot. And I got, we got robbed and I got assaulted. I had my necklace ripped off of me on my birthday. And bad things happened. It was not like a happy, happy year. You know, bad, it was hard. But the Lord was there, and he was good, and he taught me so many things, and he let us do so many things, and it was an incredible journey, and I am so grateful for it, so grateful for it. And so the next most frequently asked question people ask me now is, what are you going to do next? And you know what, guys? I really don't know. I don't know exactly. I can't tell you too much right now, but what I do know is that I'm going to do it with the Lord. And I'm not going to do it on my own strength. I'm going to do it with the Lord. I actually, when I was at church yesterday, I kind of had this vision. Um, whenever I whenever I pray or worship, sometimes I go to this, like, place. Like, this, I don't know, you can call it a happy place if you want. It's just, like, this place the Lord and I have. And I actually imagined it for the first time when I was at training camp. And it's basically a beach, and I'm sitting on this chair, and there's two chairs, and I'm, like, wearing a pretty dress, and... The Lord usually shows up, and I'm always, like, really surprised to see him. <laughs> and more, you know, I don't want to get too many details. It's kind of intimate. But I had this vision at church yesterday that the Lord was like, come on, we are moving. We're going somewhere new. Like, we are walking down the beach, and we're going somewhere new. And it's going to be good, too, but we can't stay here anymore. We are going um, to a new place. And I don't, I don't know where it is. I don't know what life will look like in a year or in a couple months. I don't, I don't know. But I'm going there with the Lord. So it should be good. <laughs> so thank you for watching this video. Thank you for following my journey. Um, if you follow it from the beginning, from before the beginning, if you've been a subscriber for years, if you financially supported me, if you didn't, if you, this is the first video I've ever watched. Um, thanks for watching it. Thanks for, thanks for commenting. 
Thank you for all the messages you guys have sent me. I get so many messages. Um, you guys are so encouraging. And you tell me that you inspire me, but I still need that encouragement and inspiration from you guys. So I'm so, so, so appreciative that you are not shy to offer it. Um, so just keep doing that. Keep keep speaking up and keep letting me know how this vlog has been a ministry because it's really cool. And yeah, so thanks for everything, all the support. Um, support in any way, if you have done anything. Literally, it meant the world to me. So thank you. And look forward to what's next. And don't ask me what it is because I don't know. <laughs> but we'll see together. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one very soon. Bye. Oh, and subscribe to my channel. Come on. We got to get to 10,000 people. Let's do it. All right. All right. Thumbs up this video. Bye. Look, my mom's so cute. Wow. 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 <laughs> These are from my friend Katie.